So I'm trying to think of the best possible words to, you know, get this through. And the words I could think of are I loved it. I loved every bit of Avengers Endgame, every single moment of that movie. And I love the idea that it was so amazing, no matter what I say on a no-spoiler review, I'm not going to be able to, you know, deliver the message. It was really beautiful, really well done, perfectly executed to be the culmination of 11 years of storytelling. But welcome back guys to another one of my videos and my Avengers Endgame no-spoiler review. Okay, so let me get started by saying that we did expect a lot of things, we did build a lot of theories, but the writers and the Russo brothers managed to do something completely amazing, something that we did not expect. So you walk into the theater, you start watching the movie and you're like, you know what, I'm expecting this and I'm expecting that and then you realize, you know, maybe these guys just looked into our minds, read every single one of our theories or watched all those videos out there of all our theories and decided, hell no, you're not gonna get this one right. The movie was quite fast paced but not too fast, it seems rushed, the movie was beautiful, the movie was amazing and it didn't waste time doing the crap kind of stuff just to prolong the movie. A lot of movies do that, a lot of TV series do that, but not them, not Avengers Endgame. But let us though try to break down this no spoiler review into precise bullet points and as per the usual, number one. When it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and for the past 11 years, I do believe that the acting for this movie in specific was off the roof. And I did think the same about a year ago when I watched Infinity War, but watching this one I realized that they just topped themselves, they just outdid themselves. But number two, we might have thought that we completely understood Infinity War, we know it all. But the truth is, there are one thing or two that got explained on this movie out of Infinity War that we thought we understood completely, you know, we're the smartest in the universe. But then obviously, while what we thought might have been right was just part of the equation, it was not the entire thing. The entire thing got explained in this movie and was brilliant as well the way they explained it. But moving on though to number three, the amount of fan service was just amazing, the amount of surprises was really beautiful. Now I'm not talking your usual kind of fan service, you know, the annoying fan service, the fan service that when you watch in a movie or on a TV series you're like, what in the hell are these guys doing? They're just trying to please this group of fans or that group of fans. No, 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 that's not really what you get over here. You get the kind of fan service that is done perfectly, that is inserted perfectly into the overall story. So it's not the kind of thing that's corny, it's not the kind of thing that's annoying, it's not the kind of thing that they are doing in order to please one group of fans at the expense of all other fans, but they are rather doing it with style, they are doing it in such a way that it pleases everyone, it's the kind of thing that everyone would want to watch in this movie. Number 4. The movie does pay a lot of tribute to 11 years of movie making when it comes to Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it does it with style as well all the way to the end of the movie and all the way to the end of the first set of credits. Number 5, in case you're the kind of person who's gonna get disappointed at the end of the movie if you stay throughout the credits, not find a post-credits scene, there are none on this movie. Number 6, some of the stuff out of the trailers are not really on this movie, not too much of it, but some of it. The way we thought about things on the trailers, not just me, but I'm talking about all different thoughts of all different people, were basically kind of shattered watching this movie. So watching the movie, I was thinking, you know, everything that I thought over the past few months about this movie, how it's gonna work out, didn't really happen exactly. Not everything, but almost everything. And I started thinking of everything that a lot of people on articles and other videos did say about this movie, did think were gonna happen on this movie, and in the end, the majority of these things amounted to nothing on the movie itself. Number 7, the amount of comic book nods was just amazing, it was off the roof as well. Now I know walking into this movie you're all expecting easter eggs and references and nods to both the comics and other Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, but the truth is the kind of easter eggs that you're gonna get, the kind of references and nods that you're gonna get out of this movie will completely shatter your expectations and take it all to an entirely new level of awesome. But number 8, you might remember the whole Infinity War Part 1, Infinity War Part 2, that's when these two movies were first announced. But I think that that was an initial idea they were working with, like, okay, you know what, we're gonna do this movie, we've got a big story, we're gonna do it over two parts, but then they realized, you know what, we have an Infinity War story, and we've got an Endgame story. And while both are basically related, and while the second one is a continuity to the first one, 
Infinity War still does stand as its own story and Endgame does stand as its own story. The second one is inherently a resolution to the first one, but nonetheless, it's its own story, it's its own thing. It's not what a lot of people think about it, it's not Infinity War Part 2 because I've heard that a lot and I really believe that's not really the case. But okay though, number 9, The Hulk never got his own set of movies, his own trilogy, sort of like Iron Man and Captain America and Thor, but instead his own trilogy was supposed to be the third Thor movie which he was a major part of, Infinity War and this movie. And this movie kind of worked through that, this movie kind of made sure we got a culmination to that arc of the Hulk, this new trilogy for the Hulk. Number 10, without going into details, we know that a lot of characters are basically exiting the Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least two to three of them. So the movie, knowing the fans that we are, the fans of these characters that we are, they kind of spent enough time to, you know, bid them farewell, to say goodbye to these characters, to thank them for all their efforts as actors and characters throughout 11 years in all of these movies. The characters out of the comics, the characters that ended up being brought to life on the big screen and of course the actors who portrayed the roles in the most amazing of fashions. Number 11, every single movie or almost every single movie throughout all these 11 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe has been referenced on this movie and they didn't do it in the okay you know what we're throwing you a bone, we're throwing you a reference kind of style but they rather referenced it in style, they referenced it in such a way they completely fit with the story. That's basically part of all the referencing that I was talking about earlier and also part of that fan service that I was talking about, but not the big part of that referencing and neither is it the big part of that fan service that I was talking about earlier. Number 12, there are a lot of amazing moments on this movie, there are a lot of amazing moments for each and every single character on this movie, but nonetheless I do believe that two do stand out, them being Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. These two are pretty much the heroes of this movie. These two are the two that made this movie as amazing as it is more than anyone else. Not saying that everyone else did not play a major role on this movie, not saying that all of these people on this movie are not going to blow your mind away, but still though, these two are going to blow your mind away more than anyone else on this movie or almost more than anyone else on this movie. I'm going to circle back to the almost part in a moment here. Number 13, one of the most important resolutions on this movie is the resolution of the Captain America Iron Man conflict aka the Steve Rogers Tony Stark conflict from back in Civil War. Now we know that a bunch of names on these movies are going to be out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe pretty soon, some of them might end up coming back at some point but we do know at this moment that for some people this is supposed to be the last movie. So the thing is, the conflict resolution and doing it one step at a time, not jumping through it, not rushing through it on this movie was kind of necessary and that's exactly what they did. They didn't just rush through it, they didn't just jump to the end. At the very beginning of the movie, there's still a little bit of anger harbored over there, but nonetheless, they kind of resolved it over time and over the events of the movie. And that's one of the most beautiful things about this movie being three hours. The importance of these three hours is about conflict resolution, not just the Tony Stark and Steve Rogers conflict resolution, but the conflict resolution for a lot of people and the resolution of a lot of loose ends, a lot of loose threads. Number 14, I might say that Captain America and Iron Man, Steve Rogers and Tony Stark were the best characters on this movie, they kind of carried a lot of this movie. Once again, not that everyone else was not flat out great. But however though, Natasha Romanov, I think she was the star of this movie. I mean the other two had the most amazing stories, did love it all when it comes to them, but she was the star of this movie and the acting for the character was just amazing and that applies all the way throughout the movie and for every single scene that she was part of. So not a single scene with a black widow with Natasha Romanov could be considered less than great. But moving on though to number 15, the funniest characters on this movie happen to be Rocket and Thor. They've been amazing together on Infinity War and they were amazing together on this movie as well. Number 16, to speak of the villain of the movie is very important on both the no spoiler and the spoiler review, so I'm just gonna give a quick brief over here. On the first movie when you watch Josh Brolin who did an amazing job both movies, you start thinking, you know what, he's an ass. But he's an ass with a cause that he believes is good no matter what we think of it. But then you watch him on this movie, it's a completely different setting, can't talk about it much, 
but you start thinking he's an ass and he's an ass and he's an ass. But that being said though, it's almost 6am over here, I've almost been awake for 24 hours so I just decided to record this before I go to sleep once I got back from the movie. So I'm probably going to be uploading this later on today when I wake up and probably by the end of the day or by tomorrow I'm going to be posting my second video, my full spoiler review. But if you have watched the movie, let me know what you thought about it. If you're going to post spoilers, make sure you put spoiler tags. I'd rather prefer that you post spoilers on my spoiler review. If you haven't watched the movie yet, let me know in the comments down below what you think you're going to be seeing on that movie. Let's try to get a list of everything that you think you're going to be watching on this movie. Later on, go back to it and check out what you actually found watching that movie. Like, compare it to what you thought before watching. But you can let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel and enabling notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. Until the next time you tune in though for another one of my videos, Avengers Endgame or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning into this one and have a great day.